I'm Molly with Tenzo Knitting Center. We have Bridget doing all the actual work. Um, this uh, session today is actually totally Bridget's fault. Uh, she has been, she has <laughs> A, voluntold me to do this, and then B, has been on me. I don't know, Bridget, like this has been like six months. You're like, do this one. Yeah, so, totally. We're going to talk about styling scarves and, uh, and styling our shawls. And uh, so I am going to say that if anybody out there has a way of wearing their shawls that they really love and want to share, I would love it. Um, I do not feel like an expert in the least bit on styling shawls. Um, I will tell you my one and only trick in styling shawls is you make it look a little bit messy. The more perfect you try to make your shawls look, um, the, the less chic they look. Um, and uh, I, used, I spent many years as a consultant. And for a while, I worked with um, Godiva Chocolates. And, uh, and so um, they have a really beautiful term in their um, visual merchandising called disheveled elegance. <laughs> and that if something is too perfect like in a store, then, then nobody will actually take something from it, right? But oftentimes if something looks too perfect, it doesn't look real, it doesn't look attainable, it doesn't look whatever. So go for that little bit of disheveled elegance, right? In, in thinking about what you're gonna do. All right. So the first, and I'm gonna do multiple shapes of, of scarves and we're gonna talk about it. I'm hoping that you can see me fairly well. The first thing I have on looks like a long skinny shawl um, and in wearing it, just that simple tie. But one of the things you wanna think about with your shawls is you wanna think about what they actually look like. So this one is um, called blue something. <laughs> This is where Bridget's gonna hate me. Uh, it's in my favorites. I will find it if anybody wants it. But it's this really sort of fun, really big rectangular shawl uh, made out of plant-based fiber. So when you hang it loosely, it just hangs straight down. And so you can make it look like one of those really fabulous skinny um, shawls that you could wear in a fairly classic, right, shawl shape. But you could also say, not only do I want to do that, but I want to highlight that one little bit um, mm. of sort of interest to it. And so literally all you're doing is, and this is why I feel like, I'm sorry that I'm doing this, just take it and, hold, and throw it over your shoulder. And that one little bit sort of hangs out there. And you can see that the other one is also coming open as it drapes down. Now, here's my other secret um there are two so i started my uh career in retail and women's apparel and so i used to do fashion shows and so the two things that were used constantly in fashion shows are double-sided sticky tape um believe it or not and safety pins so and this is if you've ever wondered how do celebrities that look like they're half naked how do they keep those dresses on it's double-sided sticky tape uh, so we don't always want that for our stuff, but safety pins are one of our best buddies. And so if you ever are trying to get something to stay exactly where it is, but you don't want it to be really noticeable, from underneath, you can take, right, a safety pin through your clothing and through the little bit, right, and just grab a tiny bit of it. And that will actually help that shawl stay exactly where you want it to. Um, but it's not, I mean, I'm moving around quite a bit and this is staying fairly nicely. Okay, so again, all that was is you're just taking your little piece. You can be really concerned about right side, wrong side, whatever, putting it around your neck, pulling it around again, and then loosening it, okay? Now you can also take this and just sort of do some little things where you have, okay, where you have it look sort of towel-like and then coming out on the sides. One little twist, in that and that it will stay securely in place and again you can open whichever side and have it pop down the back so i think when i think about um and have the other come out front if you were to switch it you might get the more dramatic side out there when i think about going to stitches um stitches west which i've been to a zillion times and i don't know about you guys but one of my favorite things about stitches west is to see all of the other people and what they've knitted and what they're wearing um, and, but most of the time when I see people, they have their shawls draped over their shoulders and hanging straight down. And that's all that they've done to it. And while it does allow you to see all of the, the actual knitting that went into it, it's one of the like most boring ways to wear a shawl, um, if that makes sense. So if you were to just sort of scrunch it up a little bit, again, turn it to the side, have it where any of the detail that you really want to be seen 
sort of comes down and cascades down, you're immediately take it from um, not interesting to interesting. Is this interesting to people? <laughs> Are we doing okay? Uh, I'm doing so, great. Okay. All right. All right. Great, did I'm doing it. And there's lots okay, of comments good. saying how people are so glad that I had you do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm glad. All right. So now, pop up and if, say something. Yeah, I, yes. So, and, and feel free to ask questions or anything like that. If you are um, going somewhere where it is a little bit dressier, you can actually take that shawl. And the moment you take a shawl off the shoulder, right, and wear it in the back, it's immediately dressier. If you need it to stay, you can do something where you, you could hold it together. I actually love, I, didn't, I was in a home really attempting to find like really beautiful shawl pins, which I have, must have 5,000 of, right? You can take a little shawl pin and do something right right at the, at the center to hold it on. And it's gonna stay. I mean, they stay surprisingly well because you just need that little bit of tension. But if you're, if you're really doing something that is a little bit more um, elegant, you can actually have it hold around your shoulders. I'm sorry, you're at the creek of your elbow, right? And that alone takes it and makes it a little bit more elegant, but you're gonna have to make sure it's long enough. I'm not sure that I would trust this one to do that, um, right? But just that little bit of shoulder. And the joy is most of us actually have relatively pretty shoulders and we're trying to hide our arm. And so this is a great way of hiding those arms. Okay, um, one of the things that you can think about is you can think about the actual, shape so just a second Molly. The, that last one yeah. do you remember the pat name of the pattern that last one yeah. it's one that i wrote for a magazine okay i'll go look on your your ravelry. it's not gonna it, well, you know it may be on my ravelry page. it's this is one you'd have to buy from interweave um oh, okay. but okay. yeah but it's i think it's on my ravelry page this is one i've never published so i don't like it um or if you really like it maybe one of these days i'll publish it but what i did is i put these like big little loopy things in it and in doing that, it actually gives me a place to create my own uh, little shawl pin, right? And so I can pull through and not have to have anything there. Now, again, the moment I just do it down the front, it's not exciting. But if I take it around halfway around my shoulder, and instead of just doing the normal little flip, because this is a relatively short one, and it's not going to be great for staying, if I find one of those little loopy holes and pop it through a loopy hole, I take it and I make it into like a really easy to wear sort of fun, fun thing. I can also grab a cuff, right? And because I have an interesting element to hold those together, I can actually fold them over a little bit and then over into here and I can cuff them together with one of the little Right, these are every, these are sort of everywhere out there. And then I can hold it together this way or all the way through the whole thing. But because I'm coming through one of the holes, it gives it a little bit more of an interest. Okay, anyway, so those are just something interesting. Now, let's talk asymmetrical because I think that we love making asymmetrical. This is Carol's pattern. This is, if you leave, I think, and this is actually like, a, one, this is one of my favorite shawls that I own. Um, and it's just a beautiful pattern, right? She has all kinds of really fun details. It's super fun to, to make. And, um, but we put it on and in that traditional way, it's just like really, it has like, like super long bits. So again, my thing is I want whatever part of this that I want people to really see, I'm going to cascade that down the front, right? Then loop the rest of it around this is where we just have to get like really sort of messy with it and then I'm going to tie these I don't know I always look in the mirror when I do it I'm looking like a phone trying to figure this stuff out I'll do a little tie right and then I'll look at it and say well I don't like that tie right there and so then I'll say maybe what I want to do is I want to hide the tie and so then I'm coming through re right disheveled elegance remember retightening. And then really thinking about what do I want to do with these two ends. So now I have this really long sort of crazy end, and this is in almost all of our long um, asymmetrical shawls, right, that start with those three. And so I can actually make that 
look like part of the su super cool sort of smooshy, smooshy bit. And if I want it to be a little higher, I just take it a little bit higher. And because I'm using that one end doing it, I come a little bit closer, it gives sort of an interesting element. And I'm probably, knowing me, going to take that little element up to my shoulder. Um, the other thing is anything that we do that's like a little further higher up on us tends to balance. And that's always a good thing. So, so now I'm going to come up onto the shoulder, do my little loop, cinch that knot up a little bit. And I now then have a little tail that's going to come all the way over. I'm doing this really fast, you guys. So I would spend a little time re-schmooshing. Schmooshing is very I, I, I technical have term. Long, I oftentimes have those long skinny ones and I'm never sure what to do with them. So right? somebody wants to yes. know if we can look elegant even if we're going just to Costco. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm actually like somewhat appalled by, you know, going to the post office and seeing people in their, uh, in their pajamas, right, and stuff. And I mean, okay, and I will admit that like, this is my standard sort of garb is to have something that is super comfortable and feels like I'm wearing pajamas, but doesn't look like it. Okay, we all have different body types. I'm going to show some stuff that you're like, yeah, I'm never going to do that. And that's okay, because, you know, just think about other people. Um, for, uh, for those out there that are a little skinnier, these things also are super fun to be able to tie to the side. And so this does a couple of things. It helps really showcase, turn this all the way around, showcase the beauty of the shawl, right? It gives a sort of interesting element at the waist. And then it also means you're just going to totally stay still. So um, there's a like triangular shawls will often do this and be tied in the back, but you can have a lot of fun with these really, really elongated shawls and doing this sort of thing. Um, That's so cool. I've never done that. I know, right? And it's really, you know, like if you're doing dishes or something and, you don't, and you're still cold, you don't want to take your, your shawl off, I will often tie it up so that it doesn't get in my way. Okay, this little guy is... This, that was one of our mystery knit alongs. This was one of our mystery knit alongs. This is called What's the Hats? And this was um, like essentially a half a half that turns into a, um, a crescent shaped shawl. And again, right, we can wear it all traditional and everything. And this is also one of those hats are traditionally worn um, cross body and tied in the back um, because you can be very, very functional with it, right, and get all kinds of stuff done. So this is very, it's a very long shawl and you can totally get away with doing that um, and tying it the second time. But this is also one, I think when I wear it, I tend to just schmoosh. And I know that the schmooshing is like, sounds kind of weird, but I'm going to say, okay, well, this is the least, least interesting part of it. And anything that's the least interesting, I'm going to tuck under. And again, I'm always, almost always going to pull a little bit over one shoulder because yeah, you interest in, inter instantly make it a little bit more interesting and doing that to where you get a little bit off balance. And anything that we do that is slightly asymmetrical also takes the, the, our eye and makes us look thinner. And I'm always like, hey, how can I do a little, look a little better? Okay. So you have several I people commenting that they've always had... Um... Well, well, I'm one of them. Say so they've had these asymmetrical shawls, but didn't know how to wear them. So they've stayed away from them. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I, I hear it all the time, actually. But I think it's because if we're trying just to drape over our shoulders, it doesn't work well. This is Sandy, one of loves, Sandy loves the beads. <laughs> yeah, I love a bead. I just, yeah. Beads just do something really good for shawls with giving it a nice weight. It's very, very true. So this is um, Carol's latest called Katie Kins. And I just think this is really, really beautiful. But this is, what is it? An equilateral triangle? Am I saying the right thing? Where all sides are exactly the same? Yep, you're right. Right? Yep. So yep. When, when that's true, it actually makes a shawl a little bit more complicated to wear. And it makes it like really cool to do really fun stuff because there's no right uh, upside, right side, right upside, <laughs> top and bottom, whatever, you know what I mean. There's, you can literally sort of choose any which way that you want to wear this. So when I come across things like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of fold it in and again, throw it over the side and throw it over this side. And I'm going to make it um, 
similar to a cowboy cowl. Oftentimes when people take a, a full on rectangular shawl or a triangular shawl and make it into a cowboy cowl, they will smoosh it up, put it on, tie it at the back, right? And bring it under. And that's great. And if you had then a coat that you put over top of it, then I think you're gonna look awesome and it's gonna look super stylish. But if it's just straight down, eh, it's, it's only okay. But you take that exact same thing and you turn it to the side, right? And either coming straight down or even a little bit further to the back. And you've got a really, really beautiful looking cowl um, or scarf rather. And you can take it and sort of like move things up even a little bit underneath and get it to do exactly what you want it to do. And then you look, it looks like it's multi-layered and it makes a really, really interesting piece. If you need any one little piece to stay where you need it to stay, you can use things like the cuffs and pull them through, plunk them right in. Why don't you not try to do this when you can't see? There we go, right? And it's just, these are really nice because they're just really little. But if you want a bigger statement piece, you just grab a couple of them and you do all three. Do things in uneven numbers, right? Um, threes, fives, whatever like that. And then if you do several of them, it makes it actually a little bit more interesting. Any questions at all so far? Oops, sorry, I'm trying to get off my get questions. It says, Molly needs to write an illustrated book about this in her spare time. <laughs> <laughs> I will do it. Okay. Another one for people that are younger, a whole lot younger than me. People are saying they really of, like this, by the way. Okay, all right. I'm glad. I'm glad. One of the things, like for little bitty teenagers, um, that is a super fun thing is to wear your triangular shawls um, strong style. Uh, and it's, it's really fun. You think about like um, leggings and a cool, super fun little jean jacket, uh, right? Anything like that. And then you take that all of that color and you're bringing it down. I will say it's going to need to be a light fabric to do that because you're not going to want anything that's adding bulk. Um, okay, so the other thing that you can always do with these is you can always turn your uh, triangular shawls into like long sort of skinny draping uh, uh, sort of long shawls just by rolling up. And when you roll those up, and you pull them around and duck them under, right? You might say, why am I doing that? It's since I'm, I actually have a, you know, I have long skinny scarves, but if you only make triangular scarves and you want it to ever be something that's a little bit smaller and has that sort of Parisian look, you literally just roll it. Um, and then you're, and you still have all the pretty color um, and you still get a sense and you have a nice tag of what it is but it gives a really nice feel right around the neck. Okay, let's talk about, so, I mean, my personal favorite are actually the super long rectangular shawls. I'll show you one more. This is just one of those really, really long, skinny little guys. I don't know that anybody's actually making these anymore. Um, so they, they were made as like little shawlettes and oftentimes people would just, you know, hope, have them come all the way straight down. Uh, but I think one of the things that's sort of fun with these is, and any of the long rectangular ones, is to make a loop on one side, pop your other one through, and then you can take that knot and sort of move it up. It's like a slip knot. You're essentially making a slip knot. And then I would spend some time playing with it, get my little picos going whichever way I want them to go. This little guy is called Perfectly Pico. Um, and it's just fun it's a million if you ever needed to get good at a pico cast on this will do it for you uh so it's really sort of fun in that way and i also like to take these long skinny ones and just fold them over and pull them through um so i'm going to switch from this sort of uh shape just to a regular old long skinny shape and talk about that for a second this is another one i wrote for a magazine um this one was called long on elegance so here's an interesting story so when I made, first designed this little scarf, I designed it um, with uh, the cashmere from Afghanistan, the from the mountain cashmere. And it's always that thing, you know, this is, I've only been knitting for 14, 14 maybe 15 years. 
Um, and this one I made like six or seven years ago. Uh, and I have been a student of fiber um, the whole time I've been knitting. And some of it was trial by error and some of it I learned. But this is a really beautiful yarn from Cascade called um, Echo Duo. And it's a merino and alpaca blend. And it's really, really pretty. But what I discovered is when I made the same exact design out of the merino alpaca blend, it curls like mad. When I made it out of the cashmere, it stayed totally flat, right? And so, um, so you have to sort of play to the, not what you want something to be, but to, to what it actually is. So this, this scarf turned into like a nice long tube, but it's still pretty right? It, you still have a really pretty lace uh, effect. And if you've done all of that work, you might still want to, to have some fun with it. So again, um, any of those things where you would just be able to, to pull it around and wear it hanging straight down the back um, is always really pretty. This to me, I think is a really fun thing to do because that interest um, is uh, down the back and it's a little bit unexpected. Um, and so you could do that. You could certainly always, of course, do it off to the side where one is down the front, one is down the back. Love that too. Um, but you can do with these, uh, you can do, let's see here. If you take it, pull it this way, pull it around, loosen it up just a little bit. Do your knot. This is the people who live in colder weather. You're going to love this one. Pull it through, make a little knot, find the top part of it pull that out a little and you can actually help cover up there we go, that knot and so you have sort of a cowley long sorry my tag's getting away too cowley long scarf look um, and so that's a really pretty sort of way to do it it's also a nice and warm way um, to do this if you live in colder places and you're actually using scarves for warmth and not just decoration like we do here Okay, and then, and I like Molly how you when you had it you had the the lengths at different you, you the yeah it was hanging down was at different lengths that always looks um, better too. Always, 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 always. So I, and even something like this where you know you have very very different lengths still going to do them differently. Um, so this is probably my personal favorite shape of a of a shawl. These really super long. Um, even a little bit deeper. Uh, this is uh, what you're wearing also, Bridget, is this same sort of really, really long stole. And there are lots of things you can do with these. Um, and the longer they are, the more you can do with them. This one is absurdly long. Uh, and so I totally get that. Okay, so folding in half and putting it through um, both ends is a very classic uh, sort of um, approach to wearing a, a scarf. It's very easy, it's really pretty. Fold it in half, just put the two ends through, right? But you can also fold it in half. I swear I have to do this like five times every time I do it. The first end, ready? First end comes underneath and over top. And the second end comes straight through the hole. And that gives you that same look, but like you worked really hard at this like really super interesting knot but you didn't. And you know me, that's my favorite thing ever. And you can spend a little time making sure that the, the right ends, right, are facing. And then I would also, once again, make sure that they're not exactly even because I think no good comes from that. Anybody want to see that one again? No, okay. You actually had a lot of people, you did have a lot of people asking for that again. Okay, let's do that one more time. Okay, so we're going to take it and we're going to fold it in half. And you can fold it in half like equally, or you can immediately go from, from the get-go of it not being exactly in half. This one is super long, so I can, I can do that. I'm going to put it around my neck. I leave my hand in here because I swear this is the only way I can do this. Take one end and come from underneath, right, and over. And the other one, I take from the top and come straight down. And then schmoosh. It's always about the schmooshing at the end. This is my favorite yarn. This is made out of Milo. This one, I'm like, I just don't even want to take this off. Uh, and I can't remember that for uh, blue jeans, something or another. Oh, so blue, blue, blue jean friendly, yeah. Oh, so you're all over that one. You're so good. I'm and then it gives that. you like, I love this. I mean, to me, this is like one of my absolute favorite ways, If I, especially if I'm somewhere that's cold, that I love to wear um, a scarf because it gives you that, that height and volume right up at the top. 
it gives you sort of an interesting knot, but you still have a really, really pretty cascading effect with it. So that's really pretty. Okay, sometimes you make things that have like really specific patterns to them. So this was a, was a it's a dog paws um, <laughs> scarf. This is not this is not published anywhere that you can get it unless you just email me. This is something that I did as a sort of a, a skill building knit along um, at the shop so that you have all kinds of things to learn. So when you have something like this, you can really think, what do I want to be the hero? And you can plan how you wear it based on what you want to be seen. So it's a really interesting thing to have the black right at the front of the neckline, right? Because it makes, it makes you wonder what the heck the scarf actually is. So if you do that, you can then sort of think about how you want it to come together and how you want the pieces to be seen. Um, and so it gives you a chance to actually highlight things. I can take the same thing, and if I'm not super uh, really needing that black to be the front, I can do the black on the side. And get one of the paws to be the, the front of it, sorry. And then really sort of focus on, this could come up on under, and again, give you that fairly equal top and bottom, or a front and back on it. Um, again, your safety pin is like your total body. So if you really want this to stay exactly where it is, you're gonna put a safety pin hidden underneath it right there. Um, and if you don't want to use a safety pin, you can grab like a cool shawl pin that we all have 5,000 of, and you can actually put that right at the, at the, you have to be a little careful what I just did there, maybe poke it down, right, right at that, at that bend. So it's going to stay on where you want it to be. But I think it's a really interesting thing to think about the, the piece that you've made and think about how you want it um, to sort of appear on you. And I think that's a, that's kind of one of those things to keep in mind. Okay, this is a cool one. This is a very Klein pattern called 6201J. Yeah, I was say, cool say what, is the, what is the number of that? <laughs> the, the number is really what you want, which is 6201J, but it's cool little big hand-dyed buttonhole scarf. So if you don't have buttonholes done for your Yarno, this is kind of fun because it's just a whole ton of buttonholes. But what this allows you to do is again, you can take and use, right? I can just fold this. I'm just gonna fan it and come through anywhere I want in those buttonholes and allow me to create that little sort of semi-messy scarf. Now, I just came through the middle there. And so it's just cascading straight out. But if I instead also on this other end, Span it together to where all of my holes line up and I accordion this one and come through. It gives me the chance to do that same almost knotted look, right? Without having to have any sort of knot, any sort of anything, and it's just coming through. I can then pull this up even and pull it down on my shoulders. Kind of, I gained weight on my trip. That and really because, that isn't that cute? I know, because yeah. so it takes something that's kind of like meh, uh, you know, sort of interesting, but not super interesting. And I can adjust how I want to wear it. I would probably, I will admit if I made this, I would make it a whole ton longer than it currently is. Um, and again, I can take that same thing, pop it up a little bit more, up and over my two shoulders, and I have a completely and totally different look, and they are all tied exactly the same way. I can take it to the back and have it look like a cowl, right? I have a little interesting sort of fluffy thing going down my back. It may or may That's not be cute. interesting to you, right? But it's like all kinds that of fun stuff that you can do. 
and I love, I kind of love this that you also get like, you know, just a bit of skin sometimes. Um, and for us here, where it's, we're not, again, we're not always wearing a shawl because we need to stay warm. Sometimes we're wearing it just to decorate. And in the winter, we can, um, we can actually get away with doing something like this. I can go sleeveless uh, and wear a shawl and be like really, really happy with it uh, as my, sort of my winter jacket. Okay, how are we doing? Questions at all so far? We're doing awesome. Lots of people are liking what you show. I've had um, someone commented that they're going to have to come back and rewatch it slower. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm taking forever to like smoosh any one of these things. So. No, we're, we're um, enjoying watching how your technique. And I don't really have a technique. I mean, I think this is the thing that I was like trying to tell Bridget. I'm like, I don't know. I throw it on and I swoosh it. <laughs> and that's my full, <laughs> that's my full technique. Okay. This is again, a nice, really long, sorry, let me slow, slow it down and tell you what I'm doing on this one. This is again, one of those really, really long. This is a, a two for one pattern I wrote called Susan's scrunchie scarf, I think. Uh, and you're just going to fold it in half, pull it through, but instead of leaving it down the front, you separate the two ends, pull it to the side, throw one over, one back, smoosh it around a little bit. And again, you have a really pretty, very styled and very sort of interesting scarf now, where if I think, I don't, I always feel like I sound judgy when I say these things, but if I just throw it on and leave it here, it's just kind of meh, right? It's, I mean, it's fine. And if you really love scar scarves that way, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't really mean to be judgy. Um, so if you really love scarves that way, I say rock on with your bad self because it's your scarf and you get to wear it any way you want. Um, these are just some of their alternatives in addition to sort of traditional ways. Okay. So other accessory items that we can talk about. When we take again these long sort of stoli bits, we can make them look Ruana-ish simply by putting it straight over and grabbing a belt, putting that belt on. And you can be like super casual and how you're going to have that belt go. I always tend to have my belts go a little bit lower. And this one's going to take some smooching. This one's going to do a couple of things. I want to make sure that I can use my arms. So I'm going to pull up on it enough. I'm going to drop it back in the back, right, a little bit. And I might even, if I have enough fabric, tuck it into the back of my belt. And that gives me that full on Ruana look. Um, and the more uh, sort of messy you make it, the better. The other thing you can do is leave it up higher and you can literally use your handy little safety pins and create armholes in it toward the bottom and give you a chance to create a shrug. Is this missing Lisa? This is missing Lisa, yeah. Um, if you take one, and you put a shawl pin on it in advance. This is a woven one that Lisa, of the Missing Lisa created. This is so beautiful. I'm just gonna steal it and she'll never know. <laughs> she'll never, ever, ever know. So I took my shawl pin in advance and attached it to the shawl, right, right here. And that gives me the chance to then be sort of messy with it. It's cascading down the front, it's cascading down the back and I can just do sort of like really pretty cowl. And now I just want to go to Santa Fe, right? I mean, it's just really, really beautiful. The same thing, you can take this and have that shawl pin on there and have it come all the way into the front, right? With this here, or you can take it to where that shawl pin is coming down the front and the back. And again, instant Ruana. And you could take your, this is one that's really wide enough to do the true Ru Ruana look, right? That's what it looks like from the back. I always like to show the back because some things don't look all that pretty in the back when, when, it, uh, when you're doing it. And I just would always encourage you to sort of look front and back um, and decide how you like something. So a lot of patterns, this is a, um, this is one of my favorite things we have in the store, 5300H earth by 
Barry Klein again. And this, instead of, instead of having to do the shawl pin, it's already done. So this is knit as one long um, piece, right? Back and forth and just seamed right up the side. And so it does all of that for you. But what I wanted to show you was just because it's seamed doesn't mean this is the only way you get to wear it, right? You can again do it as it comes down the back, right? And sort of the, the capey sort of look, you can do it where that's coming down the front. In more of a poncho or a this is a, a more traditional ruana um sort of look uh this is the a, like a colombian Ru ruana look is how they would wear this and you can also take it I'm thinking how i do this i do this all the time molly's really yes. getting a workout today i'm telling you right <laughs> here we go and pull this around the side right and up and you have also sort of a cowly thing going on. I've done this much better in the past. I'm not really sure how I do that normally. To think about it. Maybe I'll take it off. That's what it is. Okay, so take it off and come around. And you know that little open hole that we've been doing on all kinds of stuff. It's actually created that way for you to where you can pull it through and wear it as something that's really, really nice and warm if you didn't want the whole dramatic look. So if you want, this is the whatever number I gave you from Barry Klein, but also if you wanted to do that same sort of concept um, and you want a blank slate, uh, Church Mouse has a pattern called the Easy Folded Poncho. It's been around forever. This is a version of the Easy Folded Poncho from uh, made out of earth yarn, right? This is the one where they do the cute little cable on the side. But it's that same thing that you can wear it all of those different ways. And it's a really, really beautiful uh, easy to wear piece. Okay. Questions? Anybody want to show like a favorite way they wear something? While you're thinking about it, Suzanne Nielsen, my friend Suzanne Nielsen does a fun thing. This is not one of hers. This is a Stephen West, maybe Wedgwood pattern. Uh, he, uh, but she does a cool thing at the end of her scarves where she creates this little loop. Well, if you don't have that little loop, you can create said little loop with a brooch or a pin. Right, so my little M that I've had since I was six years old. And I'm just gonna put that down there. And then I'm going to take the other end of my scarf. This happens to be one that's like thicker on one end and thinner on the other. I can sort of decide which way I wanna go. And I can pull that straight through that little loop. I can make the M, which now looks like a W, as like one of the a real actual um, sort of focus of it, or I could hide it behind, or I could use the safety pin, right, and hide it behind and have a really sort of easy look on how that goes. And again, don't be afraid. That's very you, cool. Right? And then if then, I can actually say, I want my M, which I would then take the time to turn it around, my M to be a focal point, and I've got, and it looks more like it's jewelry now, right? It looks more like I'm wearing, I'm wearing a necklace. If I wanted it a little bit more dramatic, because this one has a thicker end and a thinner end, and I'm showing you the right side, I can take that back over my shoulder, like so, and wear it like that. And then I've got front and back interest in it. Okay. Questions or, oh, you know what? I have cowls. So this is the other, I love a cowl and I make cowls all the time. Mostly because they're really easy and really simple. So this is one, and I like these sort of tall, um, pretty happy little cowls um, like this. This may be the one that you made, Bridget, I don't know. Just put it on and I could wear it all nice and fluffy, but these are also big enough to where you can have them come over your shoulders and you can turn it from a cowl into what, a little capelet uh, sort of thing. So you could think about that, but also just because it's a cowl doesn't mean you can't sort of play with it and swoosh it around and make it do what you want it to do. So even a tall sort of big bulky cowl, you can 
um, force it and shape it into something that you want it to be. Bridget, do you remember the name of this pattern? You're done. You're not. I was looking it up. I just put it up. It's called, it's called Love Grows. Take Heart 2021. Love, Love Grows. Okay. Same sort of thing. This doesn't have a pattern. This is just one of those things that's very, very, very simple, right? But you're like, eh, it's, it's a little floppy at the top, and maybe I don't like it doing that. So the other thing that you can do is grab a shawl pin. And I usually use, I'm going to use one of these little clips. Maybe I'll use a clip. I have a frog and it won't let go. Let go, you froggy. Uh, I don't know. They, they, I'm sure they make these still. I travel a lot. And I was in um, Malaysia. And because people wear all kinds of shawls for all kinds of different reasons, I found this little shawl clip there. And so this just clips right on top. You sort of want to look not necessarily in um, yarn shops for things like this, but in uh, apparel shops. And so you can actually clip those on to make it sort of stay, right, do what you want it to do. If I wanted to have more of a V-shape, realize I'm showing you the exact seam on there. That's kind of gross. Okay. So if I do that instead, and I could have it come down, and I can actually take that clip and I could clip it down at the bottom. I could also take it all the way inside and make it look like it's an infinity clip uh, pi, uh, shawl, right? And sort of pin it down there. You can also pull it up and pull it to the side and do one of these bigger shawl pins and do a little bit of an interest to it and have it come through, right? And so it gives it like that little accordion effect and you can do that. So lots and lots of things you can do with them. Um, I like uh, with my towels. shawl cuffs on those too. Yeah, I was just gonna show you, this is a, this is like, like a shawl cuff. This is actually, um, oh, neat. if you ever have leftover yarn, you can literally make <laughs> essentially a bracelet that can also turn into a shawl cuff. And if you're not using it as a shawl cuff, it's actually a little bracelet for you as well. Um, and so they kind of do a multi-function. Um, this, and this is again, one made out of the, the, from the mountain cashmere. And this is 18, so 16, 20, probably 22 inches, uh, uh, half of it. So 40, 44 inches around, um, if that makes sense. Now the really super huge ones, this is called the three hour cowl. And this takes two bulky yarns um, and you're holding the two yarns together on a size 36 needle. Uh, and so it's just garter stitch, but you're doing it where you are doing an ombre. So you get this really like pretty, pretty changing color. And so you take something like this and our traditional way of wearing these, put it on, double it and wrap it around. And it's really pretty. It's no problem with that. But on these super, super long ones, you can also take these guys, fold it in half like it's a scarf, put it around and pull this end through, right? Turn this into a loop, pull the other end through again, and end up with a nice sort of super interesting, like big knot. Um, the three hour towel is not a, it's a sticky note pattern. So if you wanna know how to do it, like I think you're casting on 22 stitches and you use three colors and you hold the double, right? So that color A, you're holding a double and then one strand of A, one strand of B, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through until you run out of yarn. Uh, and then you Kitchener it, or I think I did a three needle bind off on it to bring it together. The whole thing is knit. It's as easy a thing as you could possibly ever make. And if you're running low on Christmas on time for holiday gifts, it's a really, really fun one. Um, this is- I went to go look for three hour cowls and there's lots of, there's lots of other three hour cowls online <laughs> in Ravelry too. <laughs> Right, I know. I really should uh, one of these days actually put that on there, but I've never, I've never because it, it, we've usually done it in store, and I've done it as a um, just as sticky a just pattern. a sticky note pattern. Yeah. Uh, so you can also do this. I'm trying to remember how I've done this in the past. It's been a while since I've played with this one. I folded it in half here. Put it on over both. 
this one. This one I'm doing live with no memory of how it's done, but we'll see how we do. Okay. Pulling that together a little bit more. My bottom line is, one more, that's okay. You can always do a snood with these. So I'm gonna find the most underneath part of this, pull it up and over. Snoot! Right, so this is again, if you live in an area that is significantly colder than we are, and you're gonna wanna play with it uh, and make sure that this end, I think the most important part that I've always found is that this needs to tuck in in the back. If it doesn't tuck in, it looks kind of weird. And you've got like a nice little hood. So again, if you're in really, really cold places, those really long things, you're wrapping it three times, pulling up the hood and you're good to go. That's not my hair. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I never would have thought of that. That's cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think the rest of these would just be like redundant. I don't think I have anything else interesting to say or talk about. Okay, anybody have a favorite way that they like to wear theirs that they want to share? Any questions? Anything I could show you again? Any thoughts? So I, I'm just going to say again, off center, slightly asymmetrical, slightly messy, and don't uh, and, and don't worry about it too much. Um, that I'll just do one more. This is a this is a fairly traditional triangular shawl, which normally when we wear it would be right pointing right at our butt, which is why I've never liked triangular shawls. You know, for that reason, this is one that I can tie behind to make a shrug. And I'm tying it in a little knot. I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. Oh, I forget how yummy the sharing is. I can hide said knot by leaving that there, or I can actually make the knot part of the interest by pulling that through, right? And if I want it sort of a combination of both, I can hide it yet one more time. I have to say, this has never been one of my favorite looks. I think it looks like, I don't know that I love the way it looks from the back, but people always think like this, so I always show it. Um, but if I were wearing this, I'm gonna just make it nice and messy. And I'm going to pull it up to where the thing that I think is most interesting is being shown, which is that this part right here. And if I need to, I'm going to use a cuff and I'm going to take that cuff all the way around my actual clothing. And if I take it around my clothing, then no matter what happens to my shawl, it's still going to stay in place. Uh, and that's one of the, right, obviously, if you're not wearing a tank top, you're going to have a harder time with that. If you're not wearing a tank top, you take a little safety pin, you pin it to your shirt, and then you put a little cuff on top of it. Nobody ever knows that you've done that. Okay, questions at all, Bridget? Yeah, so someone has a question about, um, it says, what if my tops are not a solid color? Should they make shawls in one color or a gradient? And can you show how to wear a gradient shawl? So this, um, so I'm going to say that uh, you do want to think about, so, uh, so when I knit, something has to be the hero, right? I don't like to make uh, a, a really lacy shawl out of a um, variegated yarn because they fight. And the same thing, if the shirt that I have that I'm wearing is meant to be the hero, then I'm going to wear a scarf that is not going to compete with it. So if I'm wearing something that's very, very interesting underneath, I'm going to grab one of those long skinny ones and I'm going to, and I'm going to have it relatively solid. And I'm going to do a really simple twist with it where at, at the most I have the two bits coming straight down the, the front like this, right? Or coming back over the back allowing really what I'm wearing underneath to be the hero. This is simply accenting it. Um, and I think that if you wear lots and lots of patterns, I think about Barbara, one of our uh, business partners who makes a, um, wears a lot of like really patterned uh, jewel toned um, tops. And she definitely would benefit from uh, like some deep purple or jewel toned purple, jewel toned aqua black, right, uh, neutral um, sort of colors. 
that would then highlight um, and accentuate the really beautiful tops that she she always seems to find. Gradient, I'm sitting here trying to think if in my little stash of stuff in here, I have anything gradient. Bottom line, um, so this is not the best example, but this is an example, right? This is This is one of those where it's just really big and really, really thick. Um, but we're doing, it's a brioche that changes from brioche one, one way to brioche the other way, I think memory serves. And something like this, where I have two tones or a gradient, I'm going to want both to be seen. So I'm going to want to do something, right? This is very, 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 very heavy and kind of short, um, but something that allows me to see all of the different sort of interesting bits in it. Yeah, even to the point where I could take it to the halfway point at my neckline, a little bit less than the halfway point, and be able to pop it over and show both. Um, if I didn't answer a question well about the gradient, let me know. But I think in the, in anything, uh, you want to look at what is the element of this shawl that I want to highlight, um, right? What's the interesting bit about it? Uh, and find a way to wear it that honors that interesting bit. And feel free to, to unmute yourself if that didn't answer your question. Need some coffee. Yep, yeah, that helps. There's like a lot. lot of talking. Good. <laughs> My pleasure. Anybody else out there? Questions or thoughts or comments or something that you love to do that I didn't talk about? Because I am not an authority on how to wear a shawl. <laughs> I know I had a. Um shawl and I love to wear cuffs I like to just kind of scrunch them up and put a cuff on my shoulder um yeah. one time I didn't have one so I thought oh this is sacrilege I tied mine so I was glad to see that tying it was okay <laughs> oh yeah absolutely and no and I think that's thing. yeah I was just gonna say I've seen a cute thing on the ones where you like tie little knots on the ends of those skinny skinny um asymmetric ones too that makes a real cute look as well absolutely absolutely and you could even do that on long skinny ones right, right? where you're just taking it and adding you know just yeah. sim literally just simply knotting it and it gives sort of a nice thing and i do like that um and i think there are a lot of those that will do that and that's a really cool way of, of just adding shortening up that really really long end um and mm -hmm. making it interesting that's a great point so yeah. the you were, earlier you were saying about if you had leftover yarn you basically just do a simple knit into a kind of a bracelet type and put an interesting button on it and use that as a cuff yeah absolutely so this is just uh you're making uh like a tube right so you just decide how i like big wide things right so i tend to make them big and chunky but you could do an i-cord uh and make that happen and that would be totally appropriate so yeah lord knows we all have extra yarn when you put on the when you put on the button are you cinching the the tube or are you just simply using yep. that as decoration oh thank you absolutely if you have one of the little bitty addy knitting machines the small one uh you're load that puppy up, not the big one but the small one load that puppy up and prr, and you're good to go so just to kind of give a quick idea to what Bridget was saying, if I have one of these little cuffs and I throw this on and I pull on that really long end. And this is the If You Leave mystery shawl from Carol. Yes. Yep. Someone had asked about the green and I thought I had it, but no, it's this one. This was the, I think still you asked this about is, that. Yeah. Yeah, this is if you leave the site. I, I love this one, right? And so I can just add that knot. I did a little bit high up, right? And and I could knot, and I could knot both of them. I could knot one of them. I could add a couple knots, whatever. Even just going. wearing a, even just wearing kind of a cuff in the front, I like a lot too, like that. Just the two ends, kind yeah. of cuff to the side. Yeah, and I'm probably again not going to wear it straight down the the front because that tends not to look good. But if you it depends on everybody's body. I don't know. I'm not like, maybe I'm just not super symmetrical, but uh, just choop, uh, off to the side, have your little cuff there, right? Whatever, whatever it looks like, whatever kind that you have, 
um, and see how that goes. Uh, and you're and you're good to go. You might get a little lost not or not. Okay, yeah. other questions, thoughts, comments, other ways people like to wear theirs? People are desperate to know what that first shawl you wore was, the lacy white one. <laughs> It's like out of the blue or something like that. It is in my library, so I will look um, and see. In fact, if you guys like chat for a second, I'll just see if I can find it real quick for you. Uh, talk, among it looks, talk among ourselves. Talk among <laughs> yourselves. Anybody else have a... Bridget, you should show off your finished project. Okay. I'm going to get here and I will remove your spotlight and I will spotlight me. I got one wearing it. So, oh, this old thing. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so I just finished. Um, this is River Bricks um, by Nancy Lex. She's one of our Canadian friends. And so it starts at one color, goes through different kinds of kind of brick patterns. Um, and I, I swapped off the, the, the uh, colors halfway through my mosaic. So this is going to be a big, long one. So I was kind of watching Molly to see what she does. So I could just wear it like this. I could, I could cup it in the front. I like to, I don't know. My favorite way of wearing it is just kind of swing it over my shoulder. That makes me feel all snugly. And then I can Absolutely, it. and always elegant. Yeah. yeah, very great. That is so pretty. Thank I you. love the fact that you change the colors halfway through. Feeling blue <laughs> is the name of that first shawl. Feeling blue, um, okay. and it's feeling, but and it's made for plant based. So it's for um, for our Southern California buddies, and it's fast. You're on a size. I don't know, 19 needle maybe, something like that. It's very, very fast. The hardest part of it is you do a little lace panel first, pick up stitches, and then finish it. But it's it's a fun one. And if anybody was like, which one was that? Because we've looked at 5,000 things. I found it. That was, I found it. This is by Petra yeah. Breakstone. That was this one that had just a really, really, really pretty. And it just doing exactly what Bridget was talking about, with like the really sort of simple... Um, way of just flinging it. This is so nice because it has one side that is so much longer than the other that you get just a really beautiful draping um, in it. I like this one. I've worn this one a ton. I will say the only thing you have to worry about is with those super, 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 super big stitches, sometimes they will. Um, I'm constantly snagging it, right, and having to fix that. But but it's fast. It is a fast and great and fun. Not that fast has to be the measure of everything, but I'm really lazy, so... <laughs> So fast works for me. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Was this fun? Did any, everybody enjoy it? Did you get anything out of it? I can't we got tell. a ton. We got a ton out.